Alright, so welcome back again. It's time to talk about classes. So Swift does offer you the ability to make like first class functions and you know you don't have to have a main and things like that. And that's all well and good, but to be honest, when you're in a project, I mean you're still gonna be using object oriented programming. Um, you're still gonna be, you know, having view controllers and things like that. So you're gonna be using classes a lot, right? So let's just go ahead and learn the syntax of classes. Uh, talk a little bit about constructors and inheritance uh, and kind of how it all fits together in the syntax. We're going to make a really simple class called bank account. It's going to have a name uh, and a balance that it manages. It's also going to have like a withdrawal and a deposit function uh, method, I guess I should say. And then we're also going to make a subclass of it called ATM bank account, but we'll do that one next time. So go ahead and uh, open up the classes playground. Uh, I think I've got it right here. There's not really much in there. Uh, but you can go and open it up. Uh, so we're going to be adding code where it says simple class and then you can see here's one example of making an instance of this class. So in order to make a class called bank account we're just going to say class bank account and then whatever instance variables we'd like to put in it. Uh, you know we just put in like uh, <clears throat> when we made variables all the other time. So everything we've learned before it still has direct value in making classes. So we're going to make a name which is a string. Uh, we're also going to have a balance uh, which we'll just go ahead and make be a double. Uh, we're not worried about precision, but we do want to be able to keep pennies. And then one of the things we have to do is we have to be able to construct one of these things, uh, so we need an init function. You can see it's yelling at me because I'm saying that this is a string which is non-nil, uh, except for I don't even have any constructors. Um, so in order to make a constructor, uh, you just say init. Uh, a constructor can receive whatever parameters you would like for it to receive. The constructor I'm going to make is just going to receive both parameters. So if you want to start them off with an opening balance, uh, you can do that, and that's fine. Uh, not being very creative about my names, uh, I'm just going to call them uh, balance uh, and name. Uh, this does represent a small problem in that now I've got a local variable called name, and I've also got a class variable called name. Uh, so what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to differentiate them uh, by saying self.name uh, for the one that's for the class. Uh, and then just plain old name for the local variable. To be honest, um, saying self is usually not required. Uh, it's In fact, it's almost never required except for this situation where you have a local variable and a class variable with the exact same name. So really this is the only time uh, where you have to say self dot uh, unless it's like something that's inside of a closure. But in general, uh, if you want to refer to the class variable, you just say name. All right, so there's my very simple constructor. If you look down at my uh, my test code here, I want to make a method for deposit uh, and a method for withdrawal, uh, and those just look like functions, right? So I'm just going to say func uh, deposit, and this is going to receive an amount uh, so that it knows how much, uh, and then the amount to deposit will also be a double, uh, and then inside this function it's going to be very easy. You're just going to add on uh, the amount. Uh, and then just to kind of practice, we'll also make a withdrawal function, uh, which is not hard. Uh, we'll just use the same function uh, and change it to say withdraw, uh, and we'll just make a minus. Uh, clean up a little bit of my white space, and then I'm ready to actually try uh, this class out. So let's see if I can get this to where you can see a bunch of stuff. Uh, so here you can see that we're constructing a bank account, uh, and we'll make one our own in a minute. Uh, one thing you'll notice about whenever you call a constructor, uh, it has these external names by default. Uh, so whenever you have a constructor, the internal name, becomes the external name and you're required to use it in a constructor. So this is one of the times where you'd use external names. So constructors, uh, optional values, uh, code readability is one reason you might do it, uh, or if you're calling an objective C function. So this is one of the times where we need these external parameter names. Uh, you can also see that the Swift Playground by default prints out uh, the instance variables uh, that are in this class. So that actually works out perfect for what we're doing now. So you can see that I've got a name uh, and then a balance. Go ahead and make another one just for fun. So I'll just say my account, uh, and you know you can play with the code completion. So as you uh, put this thing on here, and then as soon as you put on the opening parenthesis, uh, you can see that it it forced you to give it a name and a balance um, <clears throat> as an external parameter name. Uh, and so here we'll just say uh, any name you want. Uh, I'll say McKinley, and we'll start McKinley with a, a zero dollar balance. Um, and it works just like objects in any other class, right? So of course they're they're separate. Uh, so we could deposit. Uh, $100 into her account uh, and she'll go up to $100, uh, which is great. 
Uh, so hopefully you should feel pretty comfortable with classes. So I mean, they've made the, the syntax nice and easy. Um, if you want to make an instance variable, uh, you just put it on here. You'll notice that Swift doesn't concern itself a lot with uh, private or public. Most of the time you won't use those things at all. If you want to go look in the documentation, I mean, I can bring it up here. Uh, I mean, they do have access control where you can make things public and private. Uh, but by default, things are what's considered internal. Uh, and they actually recommend that you just you just stick with that. Um, so basically, it's anything in the same package has access to it, uh, which as far as I'm concerned makes it feel like it's public all the time. Uh, but they recommend just, just doing that, and so you can leave it to that level. Um, and so other people could access those if they wanted. And that's how they recommend you do it. But I mean, if you come from a Java background, I'm sure you'd be inspired to make getters and setters all the time. Uh, but they, they recommend uh, just letting it get its internal setting by default, uh, and then just basically making it accessible from other things in this package. Uh, as far as methods go, they look just like functions, no big surprise there. Uh, as far as creating the thing goes, the only thing that's surprising at all is you have to use the external name. Uh, that's no big deal there. Calling the function uses the dot syntax, all things you would expect. All right, so that's kind of the basics for classes. Uh, come back next time, we'll make a subclass, and we'll talk more about like initializers and chaining initializers. All right, see you then.